Hello, this is Ms. DB, and today we're going to talk about how to transform linear functions. This is from Chapter 2, Section 6. So if you remember last chapter, at the end of last chapter, we transform functions by transforming each coordinate point. So if we are translating left 3, we would subtract 3 from each x-coordinate. If we were reflecting, we would either change the, the sign of the x-coordinates or of the y-coordinates, depending on whether we were reflecting over the y or the x-axis. However, we're also going to learn in this lesson how to do transformations using function notation. All right, so if we have a horizontal shift, that's a translation of h units. Now, it says absolute value of h, so if we're going... Um, negative 2 or 2. This is what you do. You are going to subtract that value from x in your function. So if h is greater than 0, then it moves to the right. If h is left, less than 0, then it moves to the le left. But look at it's x minus h in here, which means that if it is, like if you want to move 2 units, it ends up being x minus 2 inside the parentheses. If you want to go to the right, then it's going to be plus, I mean, minus 2. If you're going to go to the left, it'll end up being minus 2. We'll, we'll look at this with examples. Um, if you're going to go up or down, you will add that value to the end of the function. And a reflection, if you want to reflect about the y-axis, then you put the negative x inside here. If you want to reflect about the x-axis, then the negative goes out front of the function. So the difference between vertical and horizontal translations, if you're doing a vertical translation, you add to the y, go high. Horizontal translation is add to the x, go left. Just a little hint. All right, let's, let's look at this example here. All right, we have g of x is going to be a transformation of f of x, okay? So we're starting with f of x right here, and we're going to say, what would g of x be after this translation? A horizontal translation right three units. When you go to the right, you actually subtract three from each x value. So that means that we would take x minus three, and then when we plug that in, instead of x here, we'd have x minus 3. So we'd have x minus 3, and then there's the minus 2. We can't forget about that. So we end up with g of x would equal x minus 5. Now I graphed the original, which was f of x equals x minus 2, and our transformed function, g of x equals x minus 5, on the same graph. And you can see that it did move, our original purple line did move 3 units, to the right, which is exactly what we wanted, a horizontal translation, right three units. Okay, let's look at another example. This is with a table. First of all, we are going to have to figure out the equation for f of x, the rule for f of x. So let's see, we've got some points here. The input of negative 2 results in 0, hmm, so maybe they added 2, but then the input of 0 gives you 1, so that wouldn't work to just add 2. And then the input of 2 also gives you 2. So we can find the y-intercept because it's right here on the table. So that can help us. We already know that it's going to go through at 1. We could graph these points and be able to figure out the equation, especially if they turn out to be linear. Or we can just Assume, oh, look, it says in the directions that it's a linear function. So since we know they are going to, it is going to be a linear function, we're going to use the form y equals mx plus b. And as already noted, we can already tell that b is going to be 1. Now we just have to find m. And to find m, that's the slope, we can use the slope formula. Pick any two of these points. They used uh, 0, 1, and 2, 2 and take the difference in the y values, 2 minus 1 is 1, 
over the difference in the x values, which is 2. So we get a slope of 1 half. So now we found an equation of our function, y equals 1 half x plus 1. Now we're ready to do the transformation. Let's see. Write the rule for g of x. Did they tell us what the transformation is going to be yet? Oh, here it is. Did it say it here? Oh, here it is. The transformation is going to be that this is a reflection across the x-axis. And the rule for reflecting across the x-axis is that you replace each y with negative y. Remember that? So when we write our equation, we're going to put a negative in front of the equation that we found in the previous page, 1 half x plus 1. That negative needs to be distributed through so that we have negative 1 half x minus 1. Here's our check. We'll graph both of them. Here's our original that we figured out from the slope and y-intercept, the purple. And then we reflected it about the x-axis. And you can see that this equation was the exact reflection over the x-axis. Okay, we're going to do a couple more examples because this is a little tricky till you get good at it. Okay, a translation two units right. The equation, the way to do the equation is that you are going to actually subtract 2 from each x. So that means that you will replace the x with minus 2, with x minus 2, and then you'll simplify. So here we would have 3x minus 6 plus 1, and then we'll simplify, and this is going to be our transformed function. You also could... Now, because of the 3 here, you have to do it that way. You have to put x minus 2 and then do the distributive property and then combine the 1. You can't just put minus 2 at the end here. Oh, and here's a check of it. You can see that that indeed has moved um, translation 2 units to the right. So it went over 1, 2. Here's some problems from your worksheet. Let's practice a little bit more. In number one, here's our f of x, and we are going to do a horizontal translation five units right. That's exactly like the one we just did. So we are going to put replace each x with x minus 5. And then you do the distributive property and you simplify. Let's look at number five. A vertical translation seven units down. Each of our f of x is the same. So we're going to have our same exact thing that we started with, our 2x minus 1. Vertical translation 7 units down is you just have a minus 7 at the end there. And then you would simplify. A vertical translation 3 units up is you will just add 3 to your 2x minus 1 and simplify. Um, is there a left one? Here's a left one. A horizontal translation one unit left then we will add one to the X so every X will have a plus one and then you'll do the distributive property and then you'll simplify that one's not done yet you still have to simplify I'm gonna go back for a minute to the beginning of this <laughs> uh, here we go right here so this is if you want to go to the right, subtract from x. If you want to go to the left, add to x. So that's a little bit reversed of what you might think. If you want to go up, add to end of function. So you will add 7 to the end, or whatever the value is, however far you want to go up. If you go down, you subtract that value from the end of the function. Um, reflecting across the y-axis, a shorter way of saying this is change each x to negative x, and then simplify. 
if you are going to reflect about the x-axis, um, I'll just say put a negative around the whole function. So put the whole whatever's after the equal sign, 3x plus 2 or whatever, and then put a negative in front and then do the distributive property. That's a little bit of shortcuts. Okay, going back to your worksheet or to the questions from your worksheet. We did the translation ones. We went left, right. We went up, down. All right, in this one, we have to have a rule first. So there's no rule. So we did an example like this. So we're going to assume that this is linear because the whole chapter is on linear functions. So we need to figure out what is the y-intercept so the y-intercept is when x equals 0. Can we tell that from the table? We can. They were nice and gave us a point that actually turns out to be the y-intercept. So b is 2, because what the, that's what x, when x is 0, y is 2. And now we need the slope. So to find the slope, you take, pick any two of your points and do y minus y, 3 minus 2 over x minus x. So our slope is 1 over 1. Our slope is 1. That's our the same, and then we can just replace y with f of x. So f of x is equal to 1x plus 2. Now it says write a rule for g of x after a reflection across the x-axis. So a reflection across the x-axis, I'm going to do a shortcut here, and jump to the slide where we wrote that. A reflection across the x-axis. Was that this one? No, that's the reflection across the y-axis. x-axis is right here. Reflection across the x-axis. We're going to put a negative in front of the function and then do the distributive property. Okay, so we're going to put a negative in front and then we're going to do the distributive property. So the rule for g of x is that we will put a negative in front of 1x plus 2, and then we'll do the distributive property to simplify. Okay, number 8 says f of x equals 3x plus 7. Write the rule for g of x after a reflection across the x-axis. Well, we just looked at that rule. So g of x is going to be your reflection across the x-axis. So you fill in the 3x plus 7 there. And simplify and h of x is across the y-axis and the the rule for reflecting across the y-axis was that we'll change each x-coordinate to its opposite so we put a negative on the x in the original here so let's see we would take 3 times negative x plus 7 and then we'll simplify so you still need to simplify the rest of these All right, going on then, stretches and compressions, they change the slope. So if you have a stretch or a compression, which are also called dilations, it's going to become steeper or shallower. If the line becomes steeper, it's either a vertical stretch or a horizontal compression. If the line becomes flatter, closer to the x-axis, the function has either been compressed vertically or stretched horizontally. Here's our rules for this. If you are going to horizontal stretch by a factor of b, you actually take 1 over b. If b is greater than 1, it stretches away from the y-axis. If it's between 0 and 1, like a fraction, then it compresses towards the y-axis. And then for the vertical, we need to multiply our function by some number by that factor. We don't have to do the 1 over though. So in a horizontal stretch the y-intercepts don't change. In a vertical stretch the x-intercepts don't change. So that can kind of help you tell which one you have. Okay, here's an example. We have a horizontal compression of this function f of x equals negative x plus 4 by a factor of 1 half. So we want to write the rule for g of x. So it's a horizontal compression. 
which means that you are supposed to take 1 over your factor and then replace each x with that. So we are going to first figure out what is 1 over 1 half and then you will apply that to your x. So 1 over 1 half is the same as 2. So let's see, again we started with our f of x was, I just want to look back, negative x plus 4. So we weren't changing the sign. f of x was negative x plus 4. And our factor that we are going to compress this horizontally was 1 half. So you're supposed to take 1 over your factor, so 1 over 1 half, and you, you multiply that by the x. The rest of the function stays the same. So this becomes negative 2x plus 4. So our g of x is negative 2x plus 4 after a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. And we can check this by graphing. And we'll see that the y-intercepts stayed the same. We'll see that um, g of x is now steeper, which means that it has been horizontally compressed and pushed towards the y-axis. All right, here's another example. This time we have a f of x is 3x plus 2, and we want to compress it by a factor of 1 fourth, a vertical compression this time. The vertical compressions is when you just multiply the function by that value. You don't do any one over. You just go ahead and multiply your original function, which was 3x plus 2, and all you do is you multiply everything by that factor. And they wanted that to be multiplied by a factor of 1 fourth, and then you do the distributive property. And that's it. And you can graph it, and you can see that it has been vertically compressed. The red one is the new one. So it's been, I don't know, it's hard to even see how it's vertically compressed towards the x-axis, but that's what it's been done. All right, and here is just some review of the rules that we have learned about today with the compressions and stretches. And it shows some examples. So this is on your worksheet. You should look at those while you do the next few problems, which use these compressions. OK, so vertical compression. Find that on your rules, vertical compression by a factor of, it's just like this one down here. Here's an example of a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half. So we are going to multiply that value times our function. So all we have to do is put the 1 fourth in front and then do the distributive property. Okay. Number 10 says a horizontal stretch. Find that. Oh, here's an example of a horizontal stretch. This one has a factor of 2. We need a factor of 3. So it says that you are supposed to take 1 over that value. So we need to take 1 over b, which would be 1 over 3. And then you multiply that by the x terms. So your, each of your x terms will be multiplied by 1 third. So our original rule is 2x plus 1. So we take 2 times 1 third x. And then we multiply 2 times 1 third, and that's 2 thirds x plus 1. OK, number 11, horizontal compression. That's like this. We have to take 1 over 1 third. 1 over 1 third is the same as 3. So that will become 3, and then that's what will go right here. And then the last one is a vertical stretch by a factor of 5. That's like this one up here. So you will follow the steps on here. You just have to multiply the whole, fact, the whole equation, the whole function, by 5. Sometimes there's more than one transformation. If you're going to have more than one transformation, then do them one at a time. It's way too hard to do two at the same time. 
So if u of g of x is a horizontal shift of f of x equals 3x, left 6 units. So they're saying start with, it's kind of hard the, the way they word these. They're starting with f of x equals 3x, and they want you to go a translation left 6 units. And then they want you to follow that by a horizontal stretch by a factor 4. We'll get to that. So first do the translation. We have to go left 6 units, which means to subtract. Oh, we're going left. So we have to add 6 to each x. So here's adding 6 to each x. And we end up with 3x plus 18. Okay, now we have... This is after the first transformation. Now we have to do a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. So you can look back at your worksheet about the rules for that, but that's where you have to take 1 over b, so it's going to be 1 over 4, times the x. So we replace x with 1 over 4x. And then we do the distributive property, or we multiply the 3 times 1 fourth and simplify. So now both transformations have been applied to that function. Really, we should call it h of x now, but I guess they called this one h of x somehow for some reason. Usually it goes alphabetically, f, g, h, f, h, g. So this one, they're starting with, oh, I guess they're giving us, I don't know, maybe they told me in the other one. So we have f of x equals x. This is why they use g of x. They want this to be the answer when it's all done. So they did h in between. First they want you to compress it by a factor of one half. That'll give you h of x. And then they want you to take that and shift it eight units left. So translation eight units left. They suggest that first we do the translation. So if we do the translation 8 units left, that would add 8 to each input value, which we end up with x plus 8. Then they will do the stretch, which is multiplying the whole function by 1 half, and we end up with our final answer. So there's three of these at the end of your worksheet where you have to do two things. So you'll do each one twice, basically. So we'll start with, in this one, just f of x equals x. First, we will go up four units, and then a vertical stretch by a factor of two. And then in the next one, a vertical shift down four units, followed by a reflection across the y-axis. And then in the last one, first a translation left two units, and then a vertical stretch by a factor of seven. I'm going to do number 14 here. We haven't done a reflection as part of a two-step transformation here. So I'm going to start with f of x equals 3x minus 1. And I'll use h of x like they did for my first transformation, which is down 4 units. Well, you can look back at your worksheet, but going down 4 units is just subtracting 4 from the end of the function. I'll simplify that, and I get 3x minus 5. Next, I want to reflect it about the y-axis. So when you reflect it about the y-axis, and you can look back at your, your notes, but let me show you one of our very first slides had the reflection about the y-axis says to change each x to its opposite. So zooming back to our problem that we're on here. So we are going to take the x and we are going to change it to negative x. This will be our g of x after our second transformation. So that would be negative 3x minus 5. And then we're all done. We've done both transformations to our original function. All right, well, that is probably enough for today. If you have any questions on this, just let me know. I know they can get a little bit tricky. If you get stuck on one, email, and I'll give you some hints. And thank you very much, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.